We are talking about a lot of different styles from A to Z, and now we're and now we're talking about N non-objective with Ashley, Mary. I'm so excited to have you. Uh, thank you. I, I can tell you my story of what I've seen of you and how I found you, but I want you to tell it. Well, I have been creating art for the last maybe 15 years or so and doing it full-time freelance for probably the last six or seven years. And my formal background is in graphic design. I have a master's from Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Prior to going back to school, which I did did later in life, I was playing with studio art, a lot of collage, um, paintings, abstract paintings, and just slowly over time kind of went from freelancing graphic designer to fully diving into the studio work. So now I primarily uh, work with acrylic paint. So I'm a painter and sell my paintings. I do a lot of mural work. Occasionally I'll do a product collaboration where I'm putting my artwork literally on an object. I mean, not literally like it's being printed onto an object or I'm doing textile work with brands who manage all the printing and create their own projects. Yeah, I would say those are my buckets, murals, paintings, and then like occasional product collaborations. And once in a while, if I get a little opportunity to teach, I I love doing that too, or offering workshops. And then actually last year, two years ago, got into really into stained glass. So now that's like kind of a newer medium I'm playing in. I noticed that. And so Um, That kind of takes me back to when I stumbled upon your work, which was at the Edina Art Fair. Oh, years ago. (laughs) Okay. And so then you were doing more collage, am I right? And now, yeah. And so I just see you just with this full desire to just like get your hands dirty and like get into it. Does that feed into the style that you create? Like what the product, the the end result of your pieces? Yeah, I would say um, I, I, I do still currently, well, first off, I still currently collage. So it's still a part of my practice. It's just not as much of something like it's more part of my prepping practice than it is something you might be able to like get from my shop or, or see in my studio. It's, it's sort of how I prepare paintings now. Um, like here's, here's a little example of a collage I did that now is a is a painting, um, much larger scale. So for me, collaging went has like now transitioned into sketching. But to answer your questions, to, to answer your question, yes, I absolutely like think trying as many mediums as possible is a huge part of my own personal practice, my own personal creative growth. And um, every year, I'm kind of looking for a new medium that can express my I the same idea. So the same idea, but a new medium. What my hope is there is I kind of want to see how the medium itself starts to translate the same idea differently. And I get really excited about that. And I think different materials evoke a different sense of connection to work. I think it invokes a different um, reaction to the work. And so I love trying new things. I love analog work, especially. And I think analog work is like the secret ingredient to my digital work. I do have to work digitally, especially with murals. But my most successful digital experiences start in my studio with my hands, playtime, as many materials as I can get my hands on. (laughs) Um, Right now, my my new favorite material is colored pencils. It's just a simple, it's not, it's been around, they've been around forever, but it's my first time using them. And I'm loving sort of like the accessibility to a colored pencil. I don't have to like bust out a bunch of materials. I can do colored pencils on an airplane. So there's even that idea of like, how can, how can my own process start to shift depending on the material? Do I become more open to it? Can I be a little bit messier? Can I do it faster without making an excuse. So finding that different materials help me engage better with my ideas and like get them out differently as well. So I'm all about trying to trying a new material. I love it. I think with this type of approach though, like there there has to be like a common thought here, like a common way that you approach all of it. And so yep. you mentioned the word play. Like mm-hmm. how most of us have a hard time just like you know, just taking out the art supplies and playing, like how do you break that barrier and just get to it? 
so intimidating. It is intimidating to play. Um, I don't think it's like one little sweet, you know, quote I can give you that's going to like change anybody's life about how to engage with play. But I do think um, for me, there's a bit of there's a bit of stretching that comes along. So like before you go on a big run, you stretch. So before I'm going to like engage with a giant piece of work, I want to stretch myself and stretch my brain. So I love taking a material, brand new material, and just giving myself some freedom to just kind of engage with it in a really physical way. It's the colored pencil. You're just kind of scribbling. You're figuring it out. You're figuring out what it feels like, what it feels like to move. And you're getting out all of your like movement and sort of gesture and not treating it preciously. And I think a lot of times we're intimidated by play because the materials can feel precious and that might feel precious because we spent money on it or like the time is so valuable. So if we like don't achieve this this product at the end of the day, then it was a waste of time. So I think there has to first be a shift in the way that we're approaching art materials and our art time. And we have to shift the value to not being your end product, but more the process. And a lot of times for me, playing with a new material is is really just also therapeutic. So I can place value on that because it's just for me. It's just for my feelings. It's just for the movement of it all. And um the joy of trying a new material. And I think when I allow myself that space and treat that space as the end goal, is the play as the end goal, not the result, then um, I always see that impact the the actual result tenfold. So mm-hmm. the stretching then helps the running. And I've I found that Every time I try a new material, it inspires an entirely new idea. So I've seen that it's like beneficial to my own creative process. So therefore I'm like doing it more and more. Um, But I, I do understand the intimidation there and I'm not, I think that's also just part of our humanness and new things are intimidating. And I think when we push through that space, we can tap into something also kind of exciting because when we do things, even when they're scary, we get, we can be like rewarded, especially in, in creative spaces. So leaning into those uncomfortable feelings versus like saying that they're bad and letting it be a really physical connection with your body and your mind and your heart and like a whole holistic human experience instead of just like, okay, I've got to make this beautiful thing so that I can show it or something, or, or whatever you do, feel the pressure you have to do with it when it's done. Um, but just using it more as like a self-care practice. That was the longest answer ever. No, I, I was going to say, you, you said, you prefaced it with, I don't think it could like create some sort of a sound bite or something that is just going <laughs> to blow your mind. And I'm like, well, you did. So you're saying that you don't, we tend to validate the use of our materials, the use of our time, wasting them, spending them, whatever word you want to use. Yeah. Put it on. Will the product make it worth it? But yeah. Saying, that's not, that's not it at all. It's yeah. the process that makes it worth it. Like, like, did you used to think one way and then start thinking this way? Like how, how have oh. you evolved to this point in your approach? Yeah. I, I'm not that evolved for really first and foremost. <laughs> I I still have my own internal pressures of like things needing to be finished or being um, ready to show. And I think it's only come with practice that I've started to shift my, my values. Also, I've, I, I'm going to counter, I'm, I'm not contradicting myself, but I, I want to add to that. I think what I've noticed in myself, my like emotional self is when all I am doing is producing for somebody to sell something, to show something, to to reach some sort of goal with the artwork, I'm not actually left really very satisfied in the end. Like some of the most satisfying things I've done that help me feel connected to myself and my 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 values are the things that I'm not showing or the things that I'm letting myself play with or the new material that I'm buying and just playing with. I actually I have noticed that I feel good when I do that. So, um, and feel bad when I'm just a machine and I feel I can 
get really kind of spirally in my head when all I do is make, 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 make. And I don't think we're meant to be that way. Um, I think that's a really like complicated part of our society where it meets creativity and um, creativity and the act of making is so much more than I think what we've been led to believe. So for me, the shift is in like, well, what have I noticed in myself when I'm not doing that? And it's not always like the best feelings. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how to spend more time on my own work, stuff that people don't see, stuff that I can take my time on, that it can't be videotaped in five seconds, um, things that might take me a really long stretch. And then they're just, they're just mine until maybe one day I do want to share them. And the reupholstery project actually was one of those, the ones that I, that, that video I posted maybe a couple of days ago, I made that couch like last fall or a while back. And it was just kind of mine. I didn't need to tell people I was doing it and I, it wasn't why I was doing it. And I didn't want it to become a whole thing. And I didn't want to be reached out and like asked to do somebody's couch. Not that I would, but you know, it's like, That's if you did, though, it and, if like, you get requests, anyone. <laughs> No, no, I think people were excited about just my couch. So, but you know, it can be a it can be a ball that you roll down a hill. And I just wanted it to just be mine for a moment. But then there was all it was also really nice to share it when I felt ready to do that. And um really nice to have other people be excited about it with me. So like there's space for both, right? Um, but that's a little example of kind of like shifting timelines on when you're doing something and who you're doing it for. Yeah. So we're we're talking about like that barrier of intimidation and creating your art and just going for it, creating some space for personal, uh, private practice yeah. that I'm not going to share. Um, but I feel like I need to scale it back for a second and talk about what this non-objective word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so I think maybe another, um, good word to use would be non-literal. Non-literal. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to look exactly like the thing we're trying to represent, non-representational. They're all just coming to me. And so um, we have like abstraction that's like, I'm going to take this bowl of grapes or even this thought and bring my own spin to it or just like focus on the essence of these grapes. Yeah. There it is. But non-literal work would be, I'm not doing any grapes and I'm not doing any, I'm, I'm like just working on mostly what I would call design principles, like shape, color, texture, things like that. When you are working, are you thinking of those things instead? Or are you thinking about like, what are you, how did, like, we look at a white sheet of paper and we make a little oval like you do. Mm -hmm. And maybe don't feel like that is enough or valid or something. Like there's something that needs to be kind of approached or let's talk about um, I don't know how to say it, like how, how we can go about non-literal or objective, non-objective work and know that the art is there without mm. necessarily focusing on what am I trying to say with this? Yeah. Gosh, that's, it's such a good question. I feel like you could have like a whole podcast about this topic and then some, um, when I'm approaching my non-objective work, it is oftentimes for me an experience, an experiment in like movement. And I'm going for ultimately a sense of movement and like bounce. Mm-hmm. And um, to use your reference of like design principles, when I step back, when I zoom back in my making process, I'm asking where do things feel balanced? Where is there, um, where is there an awkwardness I need to solve? And then, and then throughout the making, you know, till it from, from moment of starting to completion of the design, it, it shifts from putting marks in places to now problem solving with the marks that are there. And sort of like the first couple marks are asking the question. And then the second half of the project is like trying to answer it. Oh, I love um, that. That's maybe the best way to put it. So I'm going to show an example of a watercolor I just did just for play the other day while I was watching TV and um, no objectives. I just wanted to sort of have something to do while the TV was on. And I find mark making um, very therapeutic and it's kind of a good place to like set my feelings down. So here's 
here's a big thing I did. And I have a video on this also on my Instagram. And just going off of the thing I just shared, you know, I'm putting down just like a couple of marks with one color at a time. And then by the time it's 50% full, I can really step back and ask, okay, now where does it need, where does it need more love? This area needs a bigger shape. This needs more blue over here. And you are just asking sort of compositionally what, where's the response to the call? Um, and sometimes it turns out, you know, wacky and that can be just great information. I think anytime I make something, um, all it is, is information for like the next experience I have. Um, so I like, I like working non-objectively that way. I also like working non-objectively where you are letting something inspire you, whether it's the material that you're using. So for me, watercolor, um, different sized brushes kind of inspire different types of marks for me. And I like letting the tools kind of dictate where I take something, um, uh, or otherwise like the texture that you referenced that something might create like a pastel might inspire me to like want to scribble in a different way than a certain material. So I do let tools and materials also dictate the type of marks I make. Um, and then extra fun when you can just like bring them all together in one space. Uh, but I find if I'm ever stuck on something non-objective, bring in a new material. So if I'm painting with my acrylic paints and I'm stuck, I go grab an oil pastel. Um, or if I can't concept something with a painting, I'll bust out my collage. And if my collage has funky colors, then I bring it into Photoshop. So letting, giving yourself permission to try lots of different things at once for one piece to get, to get kind of your problem solving brain going. And I do think a lot of graphic design is problem solving. So I think that has influenced my own creative process, but yeah, all about that, that back and forth. Sometimes when I'm painting something too, I'll even take a picture if I'm super stuck on it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm painting the same spot over and over and over again take a photo and I'll start to edit it digitally on like the stupid iPhone, like drawing tool with my finger, or I'll bring it into Photoshop and, and manipulate it so that then my, I'm a little bit more efficient with my problem solving, have greater control versus just like waiting for paint to dry than doing it again, waiting for paint to dry. So I encourage people to like try that too, if they're getting stuck on something. That sounds like so much fun. It is fun. I, I do feel lucky. I, I do have fun in my studio. I think that's um, an important feeling for me to capture sometimes, not all the time, but yeah. Is there anything, my last question, that you feel like you are trying to capture with your work? Um, it really depends on the piece that I'm working on. Right now, for the last probably month, I have come back to this theme um, of anxiety that I've been working through um, with a bunch of different mediums, colored pencil, collage, acrylic painting. Um, and I think I have a tiny example here of a colored pencil one. This is not stuff I, I share online in any space. Um, so no one's, really seen, no one's really seen much of it, but it's fun to show you because the question is so pertinent to that. But th these are my little like anxiety doodles. Um, and they're also an exploration and just like thought loops, meditation, play. I kind of am I'm interested in the intersection of all those things of, of play, anxiety, feelings, spiraling, um, and meditation, centering, wholeness. I think there's like so many beautiful overlaps in that. So right now, when I'm not doing client work, I'm trying to give myself space to just ask, like, what does exploring that look like? What different what different mediums evoke a different reaction to the same concept? So taking this spirally idea and doing it in nine different mediums, how does that start to shift the way that the user is interacting with it? How does it shift the way that my hands and my heart's interacting with it? Um, that is what I'm kind of navigating most right now. And, and maybe someday I'll get to, to share it in a more public space or to share it in general. Um, and then, and then the client stuff, I, I forget kind of what your question was, but the client, the client stuff can be a, can be a place, of, um, a space of play too. And, um, I do love figuring out ways to make 
more illustrative things, but abstracted. That's where the collage can come in like that rock, that rock composition I showed you was inspired by, by rocks. Um, so yeah, did I answer your question? I'm so, I'm so rambling, uh, always rambling in an interview. I'm sorry. No, I, I think that's what we like to listen to because okay. when you start just beatboxing, whatever is on your heart, like <laughs> these awesome things come through. And I know that anyone who um, approaches creativity, especially on a regular basis, is going to resonate with a lot of what you said. There are lots more inspiring interviews in this YouTube playlist series on art style files. And if you want to try abstract, non-objective art for yourself, check out Watercolor Bold, seven days free. Okay, check Ashley's work online. Go for it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.